Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for your purpose, your plan, your goal for every life. We're asking, O oh Lord, that you open our eyes of understanding to behold your truth, the way you want us to see, to understand, and to comprehend, and then to lay our lives on the altar for you in total consecration and commitment so that, Lord, we'll become a real picture of what we we'll read, what we we'll learn, what we we'll study in the world in Jesus' name. The world is not reading the Bible. Many people in our communities are not reading the Bible. But Lord, I pray that as they read our lives, as they see our lives, as they interact with us, and we interact with them, they will read the Bible, not just one side of the Bible, the whole Bible, the whole truth, and the whole doctrine of the word, they will read in our lives in Jesus' name. Grant us the grace to remain godly, and to remain righteous, and to remain heavenly minded, so that the message the world sees in our lives will draw them to the kingdom in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down tonight. Welcome to a Bible study again. And we are in the epistle of Paul to the Galatians. Tonight we are looking at chapter 3, verses 10 all through to 13. Galatians chapter 3, reading from verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cause it is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law. Verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law. In the sight of God it is evident for the just shall live by faith. Then in verse 12, and the law is not of faith. The man that doeth them shall live in them. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the law, from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us, for it is reaching. Because said is everyone that hangeth on a tree. As you look at those verses and you read with understanding, you will get the emphasis that Paul the Apostle, by the Spirit of God, is laying on the world and what he is teaching us, what we need to understand, what we need to comprehend. What we need to bring to our very heart, our very life, so that our lives will show and reflect actually the teaching of the word of God. The law was given by Moses. Not only the Ten Commandments, the moral law, the civil law, the ceremonial law together with circumcision. And the children of Israel knew that they were to obey the commandments of God and the law of God. But then they could not because of the weakness of the flesh. And so Paul the apostle was reminding the Israelites, reminding the Jews, and reminding the Gentiles that obedience to the law the whole law of Moses cannot say why because no man on earth 
in any generation in any dispensation can live perfectly by the law that we find in the old covenant and because we were weak humanity weak the whole world weak and could not obey the word of god and could not be saved by obedience to the law christ came and fulfilled the law perfectly he was the only one from the time the law was given until the time he came he was the only one that obeyed the law of god perfectly spotlessly and without any blame blamelessly and because he lived a perfectly righteous life he could pay a penalty and he could be sacrificed for our sins and now we imperfect human beings we look away from our own obedience to the law which cannot save and we look to the Lord who rendered perfect obedience so that through him his sacrifice his substitution we can be saved through that that the law which we could not fulfill and all those ceremonial things we could not do the moral law we could not obey he has done that on our behalf and as we now trust him depend on him believe him then his righteousness is imputed unto us and we're redeemed we're answered we're forgiven we're set free on the basis of what christ has done and then after we're saved we're redeemed he gives us his grace he gives us his life so that now he lives the righteous life through us and we're able to say that it is not i who lives but christ who lives in me and the life i now live that i live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me and after that salvation we keep on trusting him believing him leaning on him relying on him so that our lives will now reflect the life of christ pleasing the father obeying the father obeying the word of god that in summary is what paul the apostle was telling the galatians and what he's telling us as we live the life of the christian today the topic tonight our redemption and release from the curse our redemption because of christ because of his sacrifice because of his substitution we're now redeemed our redemption and release from the curse there are three things we're looking at for proper understanding number one revelation of the curse of the law the revelation of the curse of the law number two redemption from the curse of the law our redemption is setting us free is cutting the cord and is liberating us emancipating us and eliminating the curse of the law away from every life of the believer redemption from the curse of the law number three release from the curse for the lawless the lawless are the people that live by themselves to themselves without any reference to anybody around them what they want to do they do if they want to box the air they do 
never minding that somebody's nose is near they are punching because they are not under any kind of rule and regulation they live anyhow they behave anyhow and they say they are at liberty uh -uh. were released from the curse as well as the character of the lawless when christ saves us he doesn't save us to now disrespect god deny god and live unrighteously we are saved from the curse of the lawless and from the character of the lawless Re released from the curse of the lawless let's come to number one number one we're looking at the revelation of the curse of the law look at that again galatians chapter 3 verse 10 it says for as many as have the works of the law are under the curse for it is written god said is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them verse 11 in verse 11 but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of god it is evident for the just shall live by faith verse 12 tells us the law is not of faith for the man that doeth them shall live in them the first part of verse 13 christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law what's the curse of the law that the revelation the word of god has made very clear three things here number one recognition of the curse of the law number two realization of the curse on the lawless number three reiteration of the curse of the lord look at number one number one recognition of the curse of the lord we read already galatians chapter 3 verse 10 where it tells us about the curse of the lord look at deuteronomy chapter 27 reading from verse 26 cosage be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them and all the people shall say amen all the law that god revealed to moses god told moses to collect and to get together gather together all the children of israel and reach the law to their hearing and then at the end he will say, Cause it be he that confirmeth not, that doeth not, that agrees not. Cause it be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And the people, all the people shall say, Amen. Look at Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 3. And say thou unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Thus says the Lord God of Israel. Yes, Jeremiah might be the one that utters the words. Moses might be the one that utters the words. Another minister might be the one that utters the word. That doesn't make that the words of Jeremiah, the words of Moses, or the words of Isaiah. It's the Lord. And say thou unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant. They were given the old covenant and they were expected to be obedient to the words of the old covenant 
And those who did not, the Lord said, there will be a curse, there will be a judgment upon them. That the curse that Paul the Apostle by the Spirit is referring to, the curse on the disobedient in the old covenant that did not continue in all the words of the law. The recognition of the curse of the law. Let's look at number two here. Number two, the realization of the curse on the lawless. The people who are lawless. That is, the law of God is there. The word of God is there. But the act has said, the law of God does not exist. The act has said, there is no demand for righteousness. And the lame, the act, the behave anyhow, anywhere, everywhere. They are lawless. Look at them. First Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. A person who has become cleansed, forgiven, set free, the law is not for him. He is redeemed from the law, from the curse of the law. He lives by a higher principle. What's that principle? Looking unto Jesus because we should follow after his steps. And because he has Christ, the Redeemer, Christ, the Righteous, Christ, the Perfect, Christ, the Savior, is looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And as a redeemed righteous man, the law of Moses, the whole law, is not reaching for him. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for man slayers. And then in verse 10, in verse 10 it says, for the homongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, the righteous man, the saved man, the converted man lives on the grounds of sound doctrine. But the lawless, the unrighteous, the ungodly, the unconverted, the sinner lives by the rule of lawlessness. But we're told in 2 Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 14. 2 Peter 2, verse 14. Have been eyes full of adultery. Now that's not a righteous man, but a lawless man. And a lawless man has the law as a schoolmaster, holding him, convicting him, condemning him, and because he's unrighteous, the law, which is the schoolmaster, will drag him to Christ for confession, for repentance, and then for a new life. But now, look at the lawless man having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and hearts they have exercised with covetous practices. Look at this, cursed children, cursed children, because they are lawless and they have not come to Christ to redeem them from the law 
and from lawlessness and from the curse of the law it tells us in verse 15 it says which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam the son of Bozo who loved the wages of unrighteousness that's a lawless man he loved the wages the result the reward of unrighteousness then in verse 16 we're told but he was rebuked for his iniquity he was rebuked for his lawlessness he was rebuked for his unrighteousness the dumb ass speaking with man's voice for bad the madness of the prophet verse 17 it says these are wells without water they are characters without conversion they are unrighteous without redemption they are the people that go through life and they forsake god they forsake the word of god they forsake the example of christ and they are clouds without water clouds that are carried with a tempest whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever look at number three here number three the reiteration of the curse of the lord now note the difference the curse of the law that's of the law of moses the law that passed away and when you come to christ the curse of the law has passed away also with the law that is abolished but there is the curse of the lord and the lord does not pass away his righteousness does not pass away his expectation does not pass away his demand does not pass away here we have the reiteration of the curse of the lord psalm 119 verse 21 thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed which do err from thy commandments in the new dispensation now the lord still hates pride he hates arrogance he hates being pompous he hates being haughty he hates being all by yourself and nobody can talk to you because you feel higher higher than the word of god higher higher than all men or women around you higher higher than seven men that can correct you and render a uh, wisdom you are higher than everybody the curse of the law is on the proud he rejects them but he gives grace to the humble thou as rebuked the proud that are cursed which do hear from thy commandments proverbs chapter 3 verse 33 in proverbs chapter 3 verse 33 the curse of the lord understand the law has passed away the old covenant law passed away but the lord has not passed away and here it says the curse of the lord is in the house of the wicked till this present hour god hates wickedness till this present hour if you are wicked if you are cruel if you are injurious and if you oppress other people god still hates wickedness and he brings judgment 
and it brings punishment on the wicked the curse of the lord is in the house of the wicked but he blesses the habitation of the just zechariah chapter 5 we're reading from verse 3 zechariah chapter 5 verse 3 then said he unto me this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth for everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to each and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to each is saying here this is the curse that goes all over the face of the earth for everyone that steals. Now, if somebody steals and the law enforcement agents catch him and they take him to court and he's judged and the uh, judge asks him are you guilty or you are not guilty and he says i'm not guilty did you steal that thing you are prosecuted for yes he did answer me again are you guilty or you are not guilty even though you have accepted you have stolen I am not guilty. Why? Because I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. And because I'm not under any law, I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. That stealing is nothing. Uh, the judge will say, you don't understand your Bible. In the old covenant, you had the law, and that word is passed away. After the law passed away, the Lord is still alive. And in the new covenant, it says, Let him that stole steal no more. And Zacchaeus said, Lord, if I've taken anything by false accusation, I will restore it fourfold. The word of the Lord is still there. And the Lord, our Savior, Redeemer, has not passed away. The law has passed away, old covenant, but now the Lord of the world has not passed away. And it still says there, said ye unto me this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth for everyone that stealeth look at verse 4 in verse 4 it tells us i will bring it forth says the lord of hosts and it shall enter into the house of the sea and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name and it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof let's come to point number two now point number two redemption from the curse of the law we're reading from um, galatians chapter 3 verse 11 and that no man is justified by the law in the sight of god it is evident the just shall live by faith no man is justified by the works of the law why because no man can render perfect obedience to the law of God. That's why we come and we say, Rock of Ages, clear for me. Let me hide my imperfect self in thee. 
and let the water and the blood from your wounded side the flood be of sin the double kill salvation the first kill sanctification the second kill the first kill will cleanse all your external outward sins away if we confess our sin he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness he forgives our external sin the first kill but then he also sanctifies us if we walk in the light as he is in the light he says we have fellowship with him and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanseth us internally from all sin the blood from the river side with flood be of sin the double kill cleansing me and saving me from all sin he says the just shall live by faith we're looking at this under three perspectives number one the justifier a redeemer from the curse of the law number two the just redeemed from the curse for lawlessness number three the joy and righteousness of commitment to the lord number one number one the justifier and redeemer from the curse of the law that's what we just read look at that last line of verse 11 the just shall live by faith and that shall find uh, look at romans chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 24 that christ is the justifier our so-called good works our self-righteousness cannot justify us i pay money for this i pay money for that cannot justify us i was born a christian but the way nobody is born a christian you are born of the flesh you are born carnal you are born rebellious it is coming to christ that brings conversion but being born in a christian family that does not bring justification we have to come deliberately unto the lord a day a time a moment that we realize we're sinners we confess our sins we turn away from our sins we believe on the lord jesus christ and we can say on this particular day at this particular time i was convicted i confessed i prayed i turned i was converted believing on the lord jesus christ that's how we get saved i will get justified by faith being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus let's look at verse 25 verse 25 whom god has set for to be a propitiation through faith in his blood through faith in his cleansing blood through faith in his pardoning blood through faith in his righteous blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of, of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. And then in verse 26, it tells us to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier, the justifier, the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Let's look at chapter 4, Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 5. But to him that walketh not, but believeth on him 
that justifies the ungodly him christ him the savior him the one that died for us and bore all our punishment and took away all our condemnation him that justifies the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness his faith is counted for righteousness we'll come to the lord and by faith we believe he died that was for me he said father forgive them that was for me he took my sin he took my suffering he took my sorrow he took my shame he took my condemnation i make it personal lord i believe and then uh, that faith is counted for righteousness look at number two here number two the just redeemed from the curse for lawlessness we're looking at galatians chapter 3 verse 11 but that no man no man no philosopher no man no moralist no man no religious man no man no traditionalist no man no priest prophet no person no man is justified by the law in the sight of god he may be justified in the sight of men they say it's a nice man justified before man before his wife and know my husband perfect justified before the wife the husband might say i know my wife perfect and if i find no fault in her justified before man all those people men or women that look like angels to everybody outside none of them by the works of the law is justified in the sight of god it is evident for the just shall live by faith now the way you see the pharisees the traditionalists run after christ persecute christ oppose christ criticize christ because he was telling the people by faith by faith if you saw the way they treated christ you will think the just shall live by faith is a new thing if you saw the way they ran after paul and opposed paul criticized paul because he emphasized faith above the law you will think it was a new thing but now i want you to look at habakkuk habakkuk chapter 2 we're looking at verse 4 habakkuk chapter 2 we're looking at verse 4 habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him look at this but the just shall live by his faith old testament looking forward to the time when the law will be abolished looking forward to the time when the preaching of faith will be established he already told them old covenant you know those pharisees were not reading their old testament very well and those Sadducees were not reading their old testament very well and it is those who are not reading the word of god very well those are the people that misunderstand they say it's bringing new things into our ears it says something new something we never heard before 
they should have had that before habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 look at that last line but the just shall live by his faith that's all paul the apostle emphasized romans chapter 1 i'm reading from verse 16 romans chapter 1 verse 16 it tells us for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the jew first and also to the greek look at verse 17 verse 17 for therein is the righteousness of god revealed from faith to faith as it is written paul the apostle said for it sees why the persecution and the doctors of law describe why the opposition. All I'm saying is, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. He was referring them back to Habakkuk. The just shall live by faith not by obedience to the law of Moses. And then we're told Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 38, Hebrews 10, verse 38, now the just shall live by faith. Still the same. From that time until this time is by faith, by faith, Abel, by faith Enoch, by faith Noah, by faith Abraham, by faith Sarah, by faith Isaac, by faith Jacob, by faith Joseph, by faith the parents of Moses, by faith Moses. What shall I more say? All these people by faith. And if we understand the word of God, we'll understand that justification, righteousness, proper living, acceptance in the sight of God is by faith. Now, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back to the law of Moses, if any man draw back, to Judaism if anybody if anyone draws back to the old traditional life if anybody if anyone draws back to self-righteousness I can live by myself without the grace of God if anyone draws back my soul shall have no pleasure in him verse 39 in verse 39 but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. Those who draw back to the law of Moses, to circumcision, to self-righteousness, and to working out their own salvation by themselves, all those who draw back, they draw back unto perdition. But we are of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Look at number three. Number three, the joy and righteousness of commitment to the Lord. The Pharisees were committed to the law. They were not saved. The scribes and the self-righteous religious people, they are committed to the law. They were not saved. But commitment unto the Lord, the joy and the righteousness of commitment to the Lord. We're looking at Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone 
that hangeth on a tree. Look at Romans chapter 14. We're reading from verse 17. Now that we're saved, what's our joy? Now we're born again. We've lived on Christ. And Christ has taken our sins away. And Christ has taken all the condemnation, all the punishment. He has taken everything away. And we're now in the kingdom of God. Look at Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. The children of Israel, the Jews, had the drink offering and the meat offering. But the kingdom of God is not of the drink offering and the meat offering of ceremonial law of Moses, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. We've come into the kingdom with the joy of salvation and being justified by faith. We have peace with God and then Christ, who knew no sin, was made a sin offering for us that we might be the righteousness of God in Him. And so we have joy, we have peace, we have righteousness. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. When you are born again, God enters your name into the register of heaven and you have the joy of your name reaching in heaven Romans chapter 5 verse 1 therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God we were at enmity against God he was for righteousness and holiness. We were by nature, by character, by habit, by practice, we were sinners. And the Holy One will not be in agreement with the sinful man. God was righteous and holy and perfect through and through. In his mind, in his spirit, in his heart, in his action, in his words, in his character, holy through and through. Man, on the other hand, sinful, depraved, wicked, on the inside, outside, in action, in act, in utterance, in habit, in character. So, because of the diverse natures of God and the sinner. There was no peace between God and man. But now Christ, the mediator, Christ, the Messiah, he came, laid hands on us and took the hand of God and reconciled us. And because of him, we're forgiven, we're justified. Therefore, being justified by faith, not by our works, being justified by faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. In verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 11, in verse 11, and not only so, but we also joy in God 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have received the atonement. Welcome to point number three. Point number three, release from the curse for the lawless. We are released from the curse for the lawless. We are looking at Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us. Christ has already redeemed us. It is not that it's going to happen in the future. It has happened already by his atonement on the cross, by his sacrifice on the cross. What message, what revelation that Christ already has redeemed us from the curse of the law. We didn't have people telling us at the point of salvation, already redeemed from the curse of the law and from the curse of man, from the curse on earth, and from the curse throughout eternity. That's why some believers in quotes, they are still afraid of a particular curse. They're still running here and there they want to be free from the curse but if you knew the truth if you accepted the truth if you lived by the truth you will know that christ has already redeemed us us believers us the justified us the children of god us who have their names written in the book of life. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursage is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the substitute who bore all our curse. Number two, the salvation that banished the old curse. Number three, the stage of being blessed without any other curse. Number one. Number one, the substitute, that's Christ, who bore all our curse. Already we read that in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. He, Christ, Savior, final sacrifice, the substitute, he bore all our curse. Isaiah chapter 53, reading from verse 4, surely he has born our greed and courage our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted the strict the strike the smiting the affliction that will have been upon us christ has carried that verse 5 surely but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, and with his stripes, personal, and with his stripes, we're healed. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him. And the Lord has laid on him. And the Father has laid on Christ. 
the iniquity of us all the punishment the penalty the condemnation the curse the suffering the affliction of us all everything laid on him second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 for he has made him to be seen for us that is to be the sin offering for us he took our place he knew no sin that we might be made we might be recreated and refashioned and remodeled the righteousness of god in him titus chapter 2 verse 14 who gave himself for us that's a substitute that the final sacrifice he gave himself for us for you for me for us for the jew for the gentile for us for the white for the black for the brown for the yellow for us for the man for the woman for us for the sinner, for the ungodly, for the righteous, everyone. He gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and to purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Look at number two. Number two, the salvation that banished the old curse now we're saved and that salvation removed not only our sin but the consequence of our sin the curse the condemnation the judgment and the damnation the salvation that banished the old curse romans chapter 8 chapter 10 verse 8 but what says it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That, that is the word of faith, not the word of condemnation. The word of faith, not the word of judgment. The word of faith which we preach was that, verse 9. In verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Why? Verse 10. It says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You take the word of his promise to heart. You believe it in your heart that he has paid the penalty for all the sins you ever committed in your life. You believe that in your heart and it will bring righteousness and for the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And it tells us in Hebrews chapter 7, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Here it tells us, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. That come unto God not by Moses. Come unto God not through the way of the law of Moses that come unto God by him Christ the Savior who has taken all our sin and all our curse away wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seen he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Verse 26, For such an high priest became us, 
befitted us who is holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens look at number three here number three the stage of being blessed without any other curse no curse upon the believer anymore i'm a believer i am a believer i believe in christ i believe in christ he is my savior he is my substitute he is the final sacrifice he is my shepherd no cause on my life anymore how about you let heavens hear let everyone hear the stage of being blessed without any other curse no other curse in your life no other curse your family no other curse on your children no other curse everything is wiped away in jesus name proverbs chapter 26 we're looking at verse 2 as the bird by wandering and the swallow by flying so the curse causeless shall not come shall not come christ stands between you and every curse and he has taken all the curse away and anyone that tries to throw any curse at you christ will take all that away the curse causeless shall not come and so now you can live by faith you can walk by faith you can talk by faith you can do everything by faith don't fear any curse the way is clear before you yeah. isaiah chapter 54 we're reading from verse 17 isaiah chapter 54 verse 17 no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper Make it personal. Any weapon of darkness, make it personal. Any weapon of occultism, make it personal. Any weapon of the evil society, make it personal. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. In the day, in the night, in the dream, on your way back home on your way to work on your way to the market anywhere you are with the persecutors with the detractors amen no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper and every tongue of the magician every tongue of the philistine every tongue of goliath every tongue of a pharisee every tongue of a juju man every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment thou shalt condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the lord and their righteousness is of me look at that the righteousness is not the righteousness of the works of the law it's not the righteousness of a pharisee it's not the righteousness of a sadducee the righteousness is of me says the lord the righteousness of christ upon you in jesus name and because of that no curse in your life and every curse when you travel no accident 
you move here, you move there. He'll watch you going out. He'll watch you coming in. The angels of God will be around you as the mountains surround Jerusalem. So the angels of the Lord will surround you. No curse will cut your life short. What are you? Why don't you stand up and say, Praise the Lord. I belong to the Lord and my righteousness is of Him. No curse, no calamity, no condemnation, no evil. He has saved you and redeemed you. You are free from the curse of the Lord. 